Hello again. If you haven't been here before, I am Susan Clifton. I'm a South Florida artist living in Pompano Beach and working in Pompano Beach at the Baca Artist Center. It's called the Bailey Contemporary Art Center. I'm here outside of my studio and today I want to talk about artist websites. Stay tuned. <music> So those that know me know that I'm also a full-time web designer and have been for 25 years. In the last 11 years, I have been working in WordPress and I do websites for all types of companies, mostly um, medium-sized corporations. I do shopping carts and uh, brochure type websites as well. So I have, you might say I have a lot of experience on websites, but being an artist, I also know what's best for an artist's website. So let's talk about uh, what your website should include. So I strongly believe that your website should include a really good biography. And it shouldn't just be a single paragraph that says you've been painting your whole life or that you've been creative since birth. It should really include some valuable information about what uh, really uh, informs your work, like what parts of your life, what other parts of your life, life other than being an artist informs your work. Why does your work look the way it does? It's usually because uh, some other influences in your life. My work right now includes a lot of type. Well, guess what? My mother was a typesetter. So in my, in my bio, I talk about my dancing because that was a very important part of my life and is still, you know, I did a ballet dancer as a painting. So the, the things in my life, throughout my life, from childhood till now, have find their way into my work. And I'm sure that's the same for you as well. So your bio should really reflect that. It really should include all of those aspects of what makes you, you. And, you know, also, um, you know, what, ex what opportunities did you have in life and what successes did you have? And maybe even include some failures, why not? So another important thing is an artist statement. And this is where artists really get hung up. We have such a hard time writing an artist statement. And all an artist statement really is, is telling people about your work, your process, uh, why you do what you do. That's different than your bio. In your bio, you're talking about your life and, and your experiences. In your artist statement, you're talking about why you do, why you paint the way you paint, why you use the mediums that you use, and a lot of artist statements sound like they were written, I don't know, they're to intimidate, I guess is the word. I don't want you to write an artist statement that intimidates the viewer. You want them to really be able to understand your work better. You want them to say, oh my God, I didn't see it like that before. And you want them to love it even more. You have to be careful not to turn someone who already loved your work into someone who now hates it because <laughs> it can go that way as well. But at the, just really, really give it some thought and make sure that it's also more than a paragraph. So of course a portfolio or gallery or whatever you want to call it is important. And that could be either a page that opens up with a bunch of thumbnails that you click on and it just makes a slideshow. And each slide maybe has a little bit of information about that artwork. The title, the medium, the size, maybe the price. Another way to build a gallery or portfolio would be that each piece of artwork has its own page on your website. This is what I highly recommend because now you have a lot more pages on your site. Google loves sites that get updated frequently, so now you're constantly adding another page every time you have another piece of artwork to add. But now you have to write a 
statement for each piece of artwork. So where you wrote an artist statement, you're now going to write a statement for each piece of artwork. And all that really is is what influenced you, maybe you know why you decided to paint this particular subject, why you chose to use the color palette, um, you know, whatever, whatever it was you were thinking about when you decided to paint that painting or sculpt that sculpture. Of course, we have a home page. Um, what a lot of artists do, this is a mistake that I see all the time, they put nothing but a slideshow on the home page. No copy, no, no type, no, no words for Google to read. Google doesn't know who you are unless you tell Google. So how you do that is through your title on the page and then the keywords that you use. So I use, for instance, contemporary mixed media artist. And that keyword phrase gets me ranking on page one. So what, how do you describe yourself and maybe do a little research on you know who else gets who who's already ranking for that keyword phrase and then don't forget to tell them where you are so like you include now you have your title you include a paragraph that introduces them to you it could be in first person like welcome to my website tell them what to expect you know do you have a blog are you telling them about events that are upcoming events that are going on should they subscribe to a mailing list do you have a mailing list on my home page i also add a um a video that was done that was all about my process and um another video that where i was interviewed on television so it's right there on the home page where people can if, if that's the only page they see they get a, an idea of what it is i do the footer of your website you should always have links to important pages if you take credit cards you should maybe put a little credit card icon thing at the bottom that's that explains that you take credit cards and you should also make sure that you have your address and your phone number and the reason why I say that is because without an address Google doesn't know where you live you know, they don't know where you're a practicing artist. Are you in Portland or Seattle, Philadelphia, or are you in Florida? You know, are you in Pompano Beach, Fort Lauderdale? I use a, I have two addresses on my site. I have a mailing address, which is a UPS store, which is located in Fort Lauderdale. And then here is my Baca studio, which is in Pompano Beach. So I list both so people know where they can find me and then where they can mail me a letter. And this helps me rank for both Fort Lauderdale and Pompano Beach. And of course I rank for Baca Artist in Residence and Baca Pompano and all those kinds of things. Now if you do a lot of events or if you are exhibiting in galleries and then they have regular events or maybe you're having a solo show coming up, that should also be on your homepage. And then maybe have an event page that it links to that gives them more details, gives them directions, tells them when the uh, artist reception is and what to expect at that reception. Now these days with COVID, we're not doing a lot of this kind of stuff. So another thing that you can do right now is a virtual gallery. And that's something that uh, I'm going to be looking into in the very near future. So now we're going to talk about blogs. It seems the most successful artists on the internet, the ones that are really found and have, they have been blogging for years, for like 10 years, they've been blogging on a regular basis, uploading art. Maybe they're, you know, the daily painters. We can learn from those daily painters back in the day that used to paint a little tiny painting every single day and post it to their blog and sell it for like a hundred bucks. And they ended up sent, you know, selling many of them to the point where they were supporting themselves 
on their daily little paintings. But the other thing that the benefit of that was how their website sort of became pushed to the front of the pack. And so blogs can still do that for you. And it also gives you an opportunity to, to talk about things and use different keywords. And you can have tutorials on your site and you can have videos like this one, or you can have um, just your thoughts or how you feel about things. How are you feeling about things during COVID when we can't have exhibitions, when we can't network with each other and we all miss each other? Um, these are all things we could be talking about in a blog, but keep in mind that people who want to buy your work, they want to see your work, they want to see you doing more work, and they want to see you thriving. Okay, so this is part two of the same video, shot on another day obviously a cold day here in South Florida. I am a little bit cold here in my studio. And uh, people up north are probably rolling their eyes thinking, oh, really, what is it, 70 degrees? More like 60 something, but anyway, it's here in my studio, it feels like it's 54. Anyway, let's move on. So some things that you should consider uh, when you're planning your website and you really should plan it before you start building it. So one of the first things that you should think about besides a domain name, obviously a domain name for an artist, I think should include their name. If you cannot, if you know, you have one of these like super popular names and it's no longer available, you can add the word art to it. Or um, if you want to get more specific, you can talk about the type of, uh, the medium that you work in or the type of artist you are. You just want to make sure it's not so long that people can't remember it and can't, you know, are too lazy to even type it in. So uh, give a lot of careful thought to the domain name. The second thing that is super important and people think I'll just get the cheapest and that is hosting. Don't get the cheapest. So the reason why I say that is um, hosting is really important because how good the server is, is going to determine the site speed. And also if you're not too tech savvy and you're not going to be, and you're also a very busy person, and you're not going to be maintaining the back end, like keeping your plugins up to date and things like that then you're probably better off with a managed host that maybe does a little bit of that for you. But um, I would definitely make sure that you have a hosting company that has a nice speedy server for the type of uh, website you're building. Especially if it has a shopping cart, you wanna make sure that those pages load fast. You don't wanna frustrate people and they just leave. So another thing is if you're, um, there's different types of websites. So there's WordPress, which I highly recommend as a web developer, that's the plat my platform of choice. But there are others like um, Squarespace and Wix. And there's also, I think Art Storefronts, looks like it's a pretty good thing. I've been watching some of their videos here on YouTube and they, really do support you. So um, I'm almost kind of jealous that I'm not part of that community, that I can't, you know, be a part of that community and still have a WordPress website. But um, they look like they've made it e somewhat easy for the artist who doesn't know how to build a website. So if you're um, one of those people, you might want to consider them. I think it's a little expensive. I'm not really sure. I haven't really looked into it. Um, Squarespace is probably affordable, I would think, but there's prom I know with Wix and I'm sure with Squarespace, you're limited to how much you can add to your site and then it, the price goes up depending on how much you've added. One of the reasons why I like WordPress is you are in the owner of your website. And let's say you're unhappy with your host. Let's say you, you chose one of the hosting companies out there. You built your website on uh, WordPress on that host and now you're not happy. 
you can move that website that you built to another host. Most hosting companies will assist you in that move. So it doesn't have to be something scary. When you're with the company like Squarespace, Wix, Artspan, Art Storefronts, you're using their hosting. So it's a, a web, web package, website builder, and hosting all in one. If you're not happy because the site is loading slow or maybe the SEO tools are not good enough, um, if you're not happy, you're kind of stuck. You have to rebuild an entire new website somewhere else. With WordPress, it's open source. What that means is you're, you're building on a platform that is free. So the, the hosting is not free, but the WordPress install is free. I don't care where you go, it's free. Most hosting companies have a one-click install. You tell them that, you know, if you're with a managed WordPress, they'll even install it for you. But for most of them, you have to go in and you just say, you tell the server to install WordPress and then you're good to go. Now you just have to learn how to build that website. So the nice thing about WordPress, the really great thing, I think, are the millions of third-party plugins, developers worldwide, that are creating add-ons to WordPress that add functionality and allow you to do everything from a mail form to figure out your SEO, to optimize your images so they're smaller, resize your images if you don't know how to do that. There's a plugin for that. There's a plugin for just about anything. If you want to build a membership website, if you want to build a shopping cart, I highly recommend WooCommerce. Add it on to WordPress. Super easy to set up using PayPal or Stripe. And the next thing you know, you're selling your art online. So with WordPress, you also have to have a theme. And there's a lot of free themes in the WordPress repository, but I, I wouldn't recommend any of them, not really, because you don't know when they're free. So the developer is not necessarily gonna continue to support that theme. You know, they might, they might get a full-time job. Um, they might be in India and they were a freelancer and they built this theme to get some recognition, to put it on their portfolio. And now they have a full-time job or they have their own business and they don't have time for this. So they don't support it anymore. Then what happens when WordPress updates and that theme is no longer compatible with WordPress? So I would go with a premium theme and the one that I highly recommend is Divi. And I am going to create um, two more parts of this series where we build a artist website using Divi and you can see why I like it so much. So you might not be understanding what I'm talking about. What the hell is a theme, right? A theme is the look and feel of your website. It's how your site looks on the front end. It controls how, how many columns are on your homepage, the slider that's at the top of your page possibly, or your gallery. WordPress is just the container that your theme and your files and your content are sitting in. It's what you're using to build the website with, but the theme uh, determines how that site looks, what colors are you using, what is your layout. And some of these themes have builders in them. So the reason why I like Divi is it comes with its own builder called the Divi Builder. And it has all sorts of modules inside that help you add functionality to a page. And they have a great gallery. They also have a project section, which you can use for your portfolio, where each painting can have a page of its own where you can do almost like a little uh, mini art statement for that particular piece of artwork. So I, again, Divi is one of the 
best things that have happened in the last couple of years um, in the world of web development. So again, blogging, um, I mentioned it earlier, when you're using WordPress, the blog is built in. I'm not really sure about those others I spoke about if they have their own blogs, but WordPress was a blogging software in the beginning. That's what it was originally created for. And then people started, you know, making workarounds and themes that allowed WordPress to be a full-blown website content management system. And so it, it just grew from there. And now people don't even think of it as blogging software the way they once did. But it does have a blog built into it. And so your blog and your website are all in one and your shopping cart can be in there as well. So it's a, a full, full circle system, I guess you might say. And it also uh, works really well with search engine optimization, which I'll cover a little bit probably in part three of this series. So anyway, I think, um, I've covered most of what you need to really think about. Oh, no, no, I didn't. I forgot. Your artists. I need to tell, I need to tell you about how you need to plan your art pages. So hold on a second. Okay, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. <clears throat> anyway, here we go. So you are an artist and you have art. So you have to have great images of your artwork, of course, and I'm pretty sure you know that. And, um, but what I would, I would carefully think about how you, uh, in your planning stage, how you want to present your art. Don't necessarily, you don't necessarily use the blog section, actually plan a portfolio section. And I think I talked about this earlier. You can have either a page for every piece of artwork, or you can have a slideshow, like a, a gallery that opens into a slideshow and you can have captions on each piece. So you need to make that decision, like what um, are the, what's the difference between the two and, and which would I, would I rather have? Um, one is better for search engines, I will tell you that. Uh, and that's the one with each um, painting, gets its own page, or each work of art, I should say. The other thing you should be thinking about is do you do different types of artwork and are there different categories? So, you know, are, maybe you do watercolor and then you do oil painting and then you do mixed media. Just as an example, you would have three categories and you would only show the mixed media in the mixed media section and the oil paintings in the oil painting section. And you should have on that page that, in, that sort of that they end up on, let's say they choose oil paintings, you really need to have the words oil paintings on the page and you need to really write a little bit about um, your process or, you know, the type of artwork that you're doing. And that way Google has something to, to read to sort of index that page. And also make a list of what you think you might be blogging about in the future. Um, just, you know, jot down some, some titles and always keep that like a sort of running list so that even as you go forward, anytime you come up with an idea like this might make a good blog post, write that down. So planning for your website, this is called content management. And also think about how, what social media platforms are you going to use to help support this website and drive traffic to the website and make sure that you add follow links somewhere on your page. Make sure that you have a fully fleshed out footer that has links to those places so they can find. You. Okay, so that's it for this video. I, like I said, I'm planning to do two more videos where I will literally build an artist's website. It's going to be a more basic website using Divi. Um, and we'll do maybe some advanced um, add-on videos later, but I'm, I want to be able to do it in a short period of time so the, the video isn't so long that you're bored, but also one where you can pause it 
and then try and, and do it yourself. So if you like this type of video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me some comments below on uh, whether or not you want me to do more um, art marketing tips for artists since I'm in since I am a web designer and I kind of know about these things um, just you know leave a, a comment below and ask me some questions and maybe I can do that a video on that subject and um, please subscribe to my videos and hit that alert button to be alerted when I have another video coming out so I'm going to try to do these at least once a week maybe more come again soon bye bye